in an attempt to make their name great again. A few years ago, Mora released three knives that would fastly change bushcraft, the bushcrafting scene. Today, we're going to be revisiting the little Mora Eldris, and I'm going to be telling you guys all these years later, I think it's been about four, maybe three years later, something like that, what I think of the little Mora Eldris. So without any further ado, let's jump into this. Okay guys, so I'm going to do a little bit of crafting and talking, and that's because I just downright love using the Mora Eldris. Now, I know a lot of people get excited when we talk about the Mora Garberg and even the Mora Consbul, but to me, in my personal opinion, the greatest knife that Mora released when they released their kind of three, you know, big knives in bushcrafting those years ago was truly the Mora Eldris. I think that this knife had the greatest lasting power, and the reason why I think that is every knife company that makes a knife for the outdoor scene is always chasing that perfect knife that you know do all bushcrafting kind of knife that you know we honestly as bushcrafters usually carry but every knife maker is making that kind of do all you know be all bushcrafting blade rarely do we get a blade that actually has a very specific uh, has a very specific mindset, a very specific goal, a very specific idea that it wants to achieve, and a very tiny knife that's good for small, fine skills. And so, when I think about the Konsbul, the Garberg, and the Eldris, I actually like the Eldris the most because, like I said, not many knife companies are chasing after making a really solid, really tiny knife. and. As it stands, while the Garberg is certainly going nowhere, it's definitely rooted itself into the bushcrafting community and the bushcrafting scene. I still own one for sure. You know, there there are knives that can do everything that the uh, Garberg can do just as good as it can do. Knives such as the, the Cold Steel Compact SRK is a good example. It's a newer knife, but it is about the same size and it can do just about everything that the Garberg can do and it actually is cheaper and it has a, the same steel or a very similar steel as the Mora Garberg in carbon. So so when we look at it, you know, there are constantly knives being created on that scene that have about the same size, about the same capabilities. The Garberg, while a great knife, is a knife that is going to be replaced, whereas it looks like knives in the smaller scene, things such as the SE Zula, things such as the Mora Eldris, there's no, there's no real direct competitors. The knife companies aren't chasing to make the perfect tiny carving knife for bushcrafting, and that is why I think the Mora Eldris is possibly, when we go to look back at it, one of the best knives in their whole collection. So, with that said, the Eldris, what do I think about it? Well, you can kind of tell my position. I'm talking it up and I'm saying a lot of hype about how, you know, I think it has the best lasting power. And for me, it made the largest impact because it was finally a an affordable or more affordable because it still is a little bit pricey, but it's a more affordable, super fine task detail-oriented carving knife for bushcrafters that want to focus on actually making, you know, fine crafts. If you want to carve something like a netting needle, the Eldris is a great option. If you're wanting to do even some light skinning and caping, the Eldris is a great option. And overall, it's one of those knives that's super tiny in blade length, but still has a very comfortable handle that is also very grippy and you can hold on to and use for hours without fatigue. In addition to, they also sharpen the spine so you can use it for starting fires in a pinch. You can also use it for scraping off the back of a bark or back of a bark. You can also use it for scraping off bark off a tree like this especially, especially if it's kind of a greener wood like this. 
that spine just strips the bark right off. So this thing ends up, this little Eldris ends up being such a little multi-tool because you can use it to complete a lot of your finer skilled tasks and then turn around and do some more industrial tasks, such as starting your fire, you know, skinning a game animal, gutting a game animal. It does a great job at that. Um, and overall, the stainless steel is initially unattractive for someone like myself. I am a big fan of carbon steels, but when you look at how little care you have to give, you know, you don't have to pay attention if your blade gets a little bit wet. You know, it's not going to just instantly rust. That ends up being more of an advantage, especially when you consider, like I said, the life of skinning and gutting game animals, which, once again, this knife does without, without a problem. And I think already with this blade, though I've had it for some time, so I can't say too much, but I think I skinned a fox with this thing and I've gutted a handful of animals with it, so it can certainly, you know, get in there, do very detailed, fine work, and, you know, when you're trying to skin out a fox, you want everything. You're trying to take the whole pelt, not just, you know, the usable parts, but you want everything, and you end up usually case skinning them, so it requires a pretty fine-toothed knife to do that. You're not going to pull some, you know, big survival knife, or even, heck, the Garberg, to do those kinds of tasks. So overall, what do I think after all these years of owning and using the Eldris? I think two things about it, personally. One, I think it's a great knife for kids and younger individuals who are trying to get into bushcrafting and want to learn on a knife that I don't want to say is safe per se, because I, I think there's a level of danger whenever you hold razor sharp object you know there's always a level of danger you can still cut yourself just as fast with this as you can some big knife but usually smaller knives tend to be more wieldy especially for younger individuals you know when you pull some machete it's kind of hard for a younger individual who's inexperienced so i think it's a great knife for beginners and younger individuals youth to learn you know how to bushcraft how to carve how to get good at detailed work before you know having them do bigger and more complex operations I also think it's a great knife for people who are looking for something, like I said back in the original review, something like an Essie Azula. You know, if you're in the market, you want something that's small, lightweight, compact, but still useful, this is a great knife. And I still think to this day, I call it an Essie Azula killer because I think it really truly is that. I think it's meant to be direct competition for something like the Azula, because while the Azula is a little bit thinner, it's not much different in blade length, in blade uh, thickness, and in blade width. It's really very similar, and honestly, once you take an SE Azula 2 and you put the micarta handles on it, you're honestly dealing with about the same knife as this. The only difference is the SE Azula is much, much more expensive than this option. And some might argue that it's better. But personally for me, I actually like the Eldris more. And I find the Eldris more useful than something like an Azula because, one, they left the blade uncoated here. So you don't have to worry about the... So they left the blade uncoated and they also sharpened the spine. So unlike an SE Azula, you can strike a ferro rod off the back of it or you can use the spine for scraping bark, as we just showed there. And you don't have to deal with any coating, you know, kind of rubbing off and then, you know, rust forming because it's a 1095 blade. So of course, everything has its own pros and cons, but honestly, I think that this knife is better. And once again, being that it's cheaper is kind of like a cherry on the top because it means that it's easier to afford for more of us and it's honestly easier to justify because when you're buying such a tiny knife it's really hard to stomach up you know with an SE Azula 2 plus the handle kit you know you can be looking at close to a hundred dollars really easily so it's, it's definitely not the most fun thing to to purchase you know for such a tiny little knife so I could talk about this knife forever but what I will say is I would highly encourage checking out one of these knives if you haven't already, and I would highly encourage adding one to your collection if you can do so. And as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.